<clears throat> right, well hello everybody and welcome once again. <laughs> I know, I've just been live and the um, I'll try and use my mobile phone to go live for a change only because I have problems with this camera here which is a Logitech C922 but um, for some reason it seems to want to play kind of playing ball a little bit at the moment so it's just that the video quality is not quite as good but anyway, stay with me today and what I'm going to do, I'm going to work on painting both eyes on this squirrel and we'll go from there but as I was just saying in the previous video which we had to abandon due to the the camera halting is then we're going to work on all those little details within that eye and then we'll try and get that right now the photo is by a chap called Roger Wasley now Roger is a cracking photographer he really is that's his name there and uh, so thank you Roger for the use of this photograph so he kind of and the ones that you let me do use on Flickr so thank you very much indeed now I want to dedicate this one to this to the NHS um, for everything they do for us here okay so I know they're all working their socks off at the moment trying to get things done um, so thank you very much indeed and that's because of all because a lady called Julie Andrew so Julie Andrew she's uh, been in touch with me as well asking when I'm going to be going live and here we are hello Julie so hopefully you've got me back again now and we can crack on and do a little bit of painting finally rather then have the issues that we've just been having. Hey, you've got me. Thank you very much indeed. Can you hear me okay? That's the question next, isn't it? Which you should be able to. This is where I normally go live. This is a way I normally... Anyway, so this is where I normally go live just by um, playing with the right camera. There's a Logitech one. But one thing I intend investing on, investing in eventually is a connection which has got to go between my normal come up my better camera and the, uh, the the laptop and that's basically a video capture device which I've got to buy but they're like 130 pounds is a lot of money so I'm going to kind of ease off spending at the moment for obvious reasons but once I've got that then I can use my proper camera my decent camera which is a Canon M50 so Canon M50 which is a small DSLR camera which I'm looking forward to and that's the one that I use for, for doing all my videos by the way so anybody that's on my Patreon or my Devon Artist website who's a member will find that my videos, majority of them anyway, are done with that new camera. The, the latest videos are worked with that new camera. And the quality is really, really good. It really is. Now this is a mixture of cerulean blue and indigo. So you can just pop it into the eye initially. And this will do like a foundation for that area there. Just to kind of get a little bit of blue in there to begin with. Yeah, that'll do. Now underneath that, what we'll have, I'm going to go for just a little bit, very watery version of um, Burnt Sienna. So I'll go for that next. I'm going to pop that in as well. Right, hello, Julie Andrews. Thank you. Yes, brilliant. Christina Thompson, Christine Thompson. Hello. Very nice, Paul. Audio and picture is great. Looking forward to your future plans. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Oh, I know, it's a nightmare when things don't work. You know, I've gone live many, many times on YouTube and on Facebook. Um, but it's very rare that anything really goes wrong. And just today, I thought, well, oh, because I'm getting a problem with this camera, it creates a strobe effect, like a wave up and down the screen. And that's usually down to the power um, within you know Europe and um, the differences from what it was made this is for example if you're into that sort of thing this is a 60 Hertz camera and in the UK and most of Europe were 50 Hertz so therefore it doesn't kind of sync in properly with um, with the video so therefore it can create like a strobe effect which is a little bit annoying <laughs> when that happens but anyway there we go so I'm going to work on this eye as I say I'm trying to think about getting some background colour in there. I might have a little bit more strength in that actually. A little bit of background colour. If you want to ask me what, what I use material wise, as in the brushes, the paper, you're more than welcome to fire questions at me if you want to. I'm here to do my best for you for the next hour, hopefully. I know, sit here for an hour yapping away. I don't know what I'm like. 
So I'll tickle around the bottom of there. Now this is just at foundation level. That's all I'm after at the moment. Just something which we can work on top of with all the details. Just a foundation level. Just to there, that'll do. Now while that's drying, I'm gonna work on um, some other ones as well. I'm just gonna share this link a minute with my Facebook page because of the fact is I shared the other one and now that one's finished. So I'll just finish that one there, bear with me. Okay, I'm back again now. Thank you very much indeed. Now let's do the same with the other eye. So again, I'm gonna go for that mixture of the cerulean blue and indigo. And just pop that in around there. Just a little bit, probably a little bit on it as well. And I wanna soften that down with a damp clean brush, not soaking wet. Just soften that very edge just to get a gentle blend on that eye there. Then give that a quick rinse out. Into the burnt sienna. Watch out for any runs on your metal ferrule, by the way, see that? So that's gonna drip onto your painting and create one big splodge. Not the first time, it's not the last time. This is the first time. Oh no, that's a song, isn't it, Keen? That's right. Okay, and I'll bring that one up just to there. It's one of those days today where I'm talking away and I tried recording some video this morning and and obviously for uh, for, for my website for one of the tutorials and um, it's one of those days where you start talking and he keeps going to song you keep thinking some of the words that you say and you think okay well that's that's another song there. <laughs> right <clears throat> and I think now if we go back to the other eye we have got a bit of a corner of the eye just there as well. And to do this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some of this blacky, this is blacky uh, red sort of thing. Well, basically it's lamp black and burnt sienna. So I'm gonna water that down a little bit first of all. I'll load it, I'm gonna roll it, and then I'm gonna get some tissue and tap it. Just take any residual paint off the tip of the brush there. And with all paintings, we've got to start off very light and gradually get darker and darker and darker to eventually we get some really dark contrasting colours. Now people very often ask me, um, you know, Paul, why do you paint the eyes first? Well, you know, the thing is when you're painting eyes, I like to have, to have something to look at. So when I'm doing a big portrait of a dog, a cat, a, a wolf, or whatever it might be, I've done a wolf recently for, well, that's this month's actually, for Patreon, um, and my website, they're an artist, you know, there's just done a new wolf job. If you want to fancy working out to paint a wolf in watercolour, that's where to go, okay? Give it a go. Um, I'll show you this, a little clip on that in a bit, actually, so you can just see what I mean. And to work on something like that, to be able to paint the eye first, you've got something to look at whilst doing the rest of the painting. So you've already got that life there within the eye, which is what I like to do. So we'll give this a little tickle, just inside there. It's just working with this kind of weaker version at the moment. And start to think about the patterns that you can see kind of within this eye. A little bit more there, I think I've probably got the highlights slightly in the wrong place there. Now the good thing about this photograph, it's a very large photo. And because it's so large, it just gives me a little bit of freedom to kind of pinch into that photograph. And you really work into those details. You can see all them fine details as you do so. Okay. I also want to say hello to um, Jim and Heather McBeef, which um, um, also, you know, Jim is a very, very good photographer as well allows me to use his photos. So thank you, Jim, and hello, Heather. So very small little marks now, just picking out where things are gonna go before we go even darker. You find as well, there's a little bit of a gap just there. And again, I want to sort of map this out first of all to where these little gaps are. Mind the gap. And you got the bottom eyelid, 
just coming around to there, which is just inside the edge of the iris, which is probably about in line with that area there, which is where that goes to. That's how I tend to assess things, to work out the measurements. I mean, sometimes it's a good idea to kind of just do them manually as well, just work it out by using the tip of your brush to make sure you've got the measurements about right. So I'll tell you what I mean by that. So that's starting to build up now. Just wash this brush out a minute. <clears throat> and all I mean is that if you're going to use the tip of your brush as a measuring guide, if I want to work out, for example, how far across this eye is from that eye, but yet you're drawn one eye ready, so you think, okay, well, how far across will that be? What I would do, I'd kind of work out the width of the eye, like so, that, with your nail, so get your nail on the, just where you tip of the brushes. Work out that measurement there. Like, so you can do this with a pencil. And then how many widths of that across one to just rough it? Roughly about five, okay? You can be more precise than that as well. But then you'd also look at the angle. So this piece of paper I put my hand on just to stop any natural oils going onto the watercolor surface. You would work out the angle of that as well. You do the same on the reference photograph, okay? and just try and copy the same angle of the paper or ruler, whatever you're using, to work at the angles between the eyes. So that you're working on that right direction. So something like that there, yeah. So that's, that's about right, I think, on the photograph as well. So I'm gonna work on the other side now. Try and get a nice curved feel to this eye. And again, it kind of hooks in a little bit about there. And you've got the corner of the eye coming down to here. And then, try and see where that goes actually. This is nearly straight, not quite, but nearly. Then hooks around. So anybody that's joining me at the moment has just come on board. As I say, if you have any questions you want to ask, please do so. I'm here to uh, do my best to answer them for you. As long as it's regarding watercolors and wildlife painting in general, you're more than welcome to. <laughs> if you're playing this on catch up as well, please post a comment, it's not a problem. I do get notifications from YouTube most of the time, not always, but when I don't, I very often check them every two or three days anyway to make sure I've not missed any. So um, if you want to ask a question, you're more than welcome to. One thing which will be interesting at the moment, I very often say this within my live video feeds, is where are you? You know, where are you watching me from at the moment? Because I know we're all, a lot of us are sort of housebound with the current state of affairs as we all very well know about. Let's not go into that. But whereabouts are you watching from? You know, have you got a decent broadband where you are? <laughs> So let me know. So this is still that weak version of the Lamp Black and Burnt Sienna. Just gradually building these up as you can see now. Thinking about the shapes, the angles all the time. Not overloading that brush because we don't want to do that. Barely touching the paper. Okay. So, so far, we've got two eyes starting to come together. They're starting to form. But I say you got to look at these shapes all the time and how they form around there, how they tend to vary. So a little bit now within this corner of the eye, it's going to get a tiny amount, tiny, tiny amount of the watery burnt sienna. We'll pop that into there as well. So you can be as delicate as you want to with something like this. You really can. A little bit more into there. There you go. It's amazing with the fur on this though, because it's a red squirrel, you're looking at something like this. And that's a lovely colour, isn't it? It really is. Okay. Any questions? Uh, hello Paul, hello Maria, how are you today? Thank you for joining me. Christine Thompson, Cotman brush size zero. Oh, Christine, you are so, so close. You are so, so close. Shall I tell you? Yeah. This particular one, you are very good. Very good indeed. This is um, Cotman, yes, spot on, series 111, and it's a size double zero, so two zeros. 
So you nearly got your just one zero out, but well done. <laughs> well done you. Very good indeed. Now, I think we're just about ready to go a little bit darker. They should never, ever, ever rush a painting. So don't rush a painting. Don't try and get it done quickly. And the worst time to rush a painting is, you know, when you're getting close to the end of one. You think, oh, I'm nearly there, nearly finished it. Oh, exciting. Nearly finished it. You know, don't rush it. <laughs> it's so tempting near the end of a painting just to kind of get it done quickly. I want to get this done this afternoon sort of thing. You know, and I'm like that when I'm doing the videos. Um... I'm like that. I, I, I am, honestly. I mean, the one I've just done, as I said, of the wolf, I'll dig that one out for you in a minute, um, was um, one of those situations where I'm getting close to the end and I'm thinking, oh, nearly there now. I want to get it done now. We need to step back. You know, just give me a minute. I'm just going to dig out the wolf painting for you. So I've got my originals folder here. So bear with me as I knock my microphone. So it's all live, remember this. So you have to remember, it's live. What's this one? Oh no, that's a couple of swans I did. There you go, that's one I did recently. There you go. And that's using the same technique which we've got here to give us some general idea on what we do with these fine brushes. And they can go away. And the wolf in question is, it's coming out, this one here. So this is this month's video tutorial for my devonartist.co.uk website. So if you want to go on there, um, it's obviously for my members, you can join for £12 a month. So it's not, it doesn't cost a fortune. So, you know, we're all kind of stuck, stuck at home and we're trying to think of things to do. So that's one you can do this month. That's this month's video tutorial, but there's another 50 plus video tutorials just like that on my website as well. So yeah, just finished that one a few days ago. So there you go. And the video is up on my website, ready to ready and rolling now. So I'll show you a clip of that, as I said, in a bit. So you can see what I mean by that. So bear with me. Okay, now for the darker colour on there. You ready? Oh, Lynn. Hello, Lynn. Yay, finally caught you live. Yeah, well done, Lynn. This is the second attempt at going live today. The first attempt miserably failed because my I was trying to use my mobile phone to go live and it didn't work. It was working on test before it went live, but then it just decided to freeze. Okay, right, here we go. Now for the darker colour. Now for the darkest colour, I'm going to use the same one again, which is that lamp black and the burnt sienna, just to kind of warm it up a little bit. And I want to make sure that this dark colour really, really stands out. So what I'll do, I'll just zoom in a little bit more for you on this. So that's what we had, and that's...
Okay, I think that's working now, isn't it? Can you hear me? Right, okay. Um, I'll put that on there for you. Can you hear me? Right, can you hear me now? And there's one of them things where, you know, you've been doing it for probably about a couple of years now going live. And I think most of the time works out okay, but occasionally it doesn't, okay? Right, okay. Um, usually not seeing this. Okay. Right, we'll try that. See if that. Yes, I can. Oh, hey, there you go. <sighs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, I'm back again. It's done. So that's that tiny thing, which is a bit odd. So I'm using a separate microphone pack as well, which I have to use normally. If all else fails, I've got other methods as well. It's called shouting. <laughs> okay, now. I'm trying to see where some of these marks go within the eye. It's on the edge of the eye here. So I'm going to lift a little bit of paint off in places. So you can see I'm making very tiny adjustments all the way around now. I want to see where things go. So that's going to go to about there now. Yep, it's getting there. Okay, and I think what I might do, just soften this down in the middle here. That's not quite the right shape yet. But I will, I'm going to be putting watercolour white in there anyway very shortly. So just lift off a little bit of that from there. I'm just tweaking and fine tuning as I'm going along. And I think, looking at this eye here, there's a few little highlights. Thank you for letting me know that the microphone wasn't working again. I'll get there one day. I will. I will, I will, I will. I mean, my filming equipment here, as I said, I've got a very basic webcam. Well, a reasonable quality one, but it's not bad. Um, it's not top-notch in any shape or form. So one day I'll be able to kind of buy those things in. One day. We'll see. Right, okay, so we're working on just where these little tiny details go. Just around the inside of the eye there. Oh, by the way, the music is by Kevin McLeod. Kevin McLeod, and it's called, I think it's called Fluidscape, I think, this one. So there you go. Out of interest, it's one that's licensed through YouTube as well. Um, or you can use it from YouTube, so that's fine. Right, um... Just tapping, stippling. Now for the highlights. Are you ready for this? I'm going to show you a little bit about using watercolour white and how that works. So now you can all hear me again. Hmm. Yes, Julie, I was talking to myself for absolutely ages. I've got no idea why. So, yes. Anyway, as I said, the question of the day, which is probably what I say most times, is where are you from? So now you can hear me okay. Where are you from? And the reason why I'm asking that is because we know that a, very lo a lot of us are in lockdown and we're you know, kind of stranded at home, can't do anything, can't go anywhere. And because of that, you know, we're all sat watching that or watching on the television or anything like that, just keep ourselves occupied. Or hopefully, hopefully painting. And if you're painting, even better. So I want to know where you're from and if you're painting at the moment, what painting are you working on? You know, is it a cat, a dog, a mouse, a gnat? I've got no idea. So let me know. Post it in the comments down below. Oh, that rhymed that did, didn't it? Now, this is watercolour white. And the one I use is by SAA, just out of interest. It's an opaque, says it on there, look, opaque white. Now, I suggest that when you look for watercolour whites, make sure it's definitely opaque. Because if it's not, it won't cover. So it's got to be an opaque white. So the SAA one is the one I've used for quite a few years now for all the video tutorials I do for the, for the paintings I do. And it works really well, I quite like it. Because um, it does cover when you want it to and you can thin it down as well. And I want this to kind of milky, let's go for cream. We'll go for a creamy consistency, I think. So load it, roll it and dab it on some kitchen roll. And then we can go in and start adding these little tiny highlights. So what we got, let's have a quick look. The highlights are about there. And just working my way down, back to you, babe. No, that's another song coming up. You see, I told you about that earlier on. Keep going into the song. 
It's even worse when you hear the, the cats squealing outside because of the fact that um, they can hear you singing. And these are quite broken highlights in there. So I'm going to tap those in. Now, with watercolour white, you can add a bit of colour over the top. But if you do that, do it in one fell swoop. So just in one go only, one pass. Because if you don't, you find the white itself will start to blur. And when that happens, they could go a bit like a mud pit, which it will. You can lift it off, obviously, and start that area again, but you don't want to be messing about too much with that. So I'm going to pop that in, and we can again, we can tweak it and fine-tune it as we go along. Now for the other one. Or as we say up north, the tover one, tover. And there's three highlights in that one now. A couple of tiny, tiny marks just coming down the side there. I can just see just a hint, a hint of light just on the inside of that eye. And also, barely touching, just tiny tapping, skipping at the same time around there. I'm not going to worry too much about the lower eyelid to that degree because of the fact we're going to put a, a very large wash on this as we go along. But the wash uh, is going to be a colour, as I mentioned earlier on. If you, I don't know if my microphone was working then. Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna and Raw Umber, which are the colours we're going to be using on there for the main body. We'll add to that as we go along because it's not all bright colours, but there's a lot of really, as you can see on the photograph here on the top right there, a lot of the colours are really, really bright. So, Bellstone, Oakhampton, Julie, of course, not painting at the moment, but you're inspiring me. I hope so. I hope so with my glitchy videos and audio at the moment. Um, I'm in Georgia. Oh, oh Georgie. I'm oh, living in Aberdeenshire. Oh, hello. I've just finished a pastel pooch. Oh, I bet that looks nice. All that curly hair as well. Wow. We are talking about the pooch here, aren't we? I'm sure about that, aren't we, Lynn? Yeah. Okay. Right. Ah, right. So working on that. I'm going to go for now for a little bit more of the cerulean blue. Quite watery. I'm going to tap just a few little highlights just to change the colour in there a little bit and the same not all of it just edges just catching the edge of that white really and as I say all you need to do then if you want to you can tweak it and fine tune where these highlights go move it around a little bit of dark colour back over the top and we're just about there and that'll give us some general idea on how I paint eyes. Okay? Well, little tiny eyes like this anyway. As we know, there's you know some eyes like if you paint, for example, a horse's eye, there's so much detail and there's so so much detail. But that's when you've got to really pinch into that reference photograph and study that eye, the colours, the detail you can see, and the more you look, the more you will see, honestly. And um, that's what you've got to do each time. Uh but, oh, oh let's have a quick look. So we've got Morecambe, Lancashire, hello Chris Roy, uh, Victoria, Texas gal. Well, hello there, Victoria, Texas gal. Um, we've got you from, oh, guess where? Victoria, Texas. Surprise, surprise. Um, USA, just off watching and hoping your talent will rub off on me. I hope so. I do hope so. And let me know when you find someone that's got some talent. Um, other than that, uh, ha ha, yes. A Malipu, very curly. I can imagine I painted a Bedlington Terrier. Um, as well, uh, Lynn, which is uh, quite a challenge, as you can imagine, painting uh, kind of white hair, yeah, in watercolours on white paper. Okay, that's another topic for another day, I think. Now then, what I'm going to do, I'm going to see how long I've been on here for. I'm just going to have a quick slurp of coffee. And while I'm having a slurp of coffee, I'm just going to put a little bit of a video on there for you. It's only a two minute one, so stay tuned. And this is a little bit on how I painted. The Wolf, which is this month's video tutorial on my Devon Artist site just up there. If you fancy joining for just £12 a month, and that's that's all it is. My little advert, I know, but I've got to put it on because it's my business, I know. Okay, won't be a minute. Here's some video clips from my main watercolour video and how to paint a very realistic looking wolf. Let's get started.
Now that'll give us some ideas on how to paint a wolf in watercolour. Now I'll guide you right from the beginning all the way through to the final brush strokes in over 6 hours of video tuition, where I'll teach you various techniques along the way. So let's make a start on painting this very nice looking wolf and let's get the brushes wet. Thank you for watching that and back here we are again so that'll give you some ideas what i'm working on at the moment or what my uh, members on uh, my website are currently painting well obviously they've got all the other ones on there as well so there's loads on there okay now i'm going to go for a mixture of we'll go for burnt sienna again just for well because it's a nice color and also we'll go for a little bit of alizarin crimson <sighs> Oh, look at that. Oh, isn't that nice? What a lovely colour that is. So we're looking for something to go underneath that nose. And that's not far off, actually. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to drop in a tiny amount of cadmium orange in there. That might be about right. So I'll just do that in my palette as well. That might be a bit too much. We'll try it. No, a bit too much. So we'll adjust it again. So alizarin crimson, which is also a strong colour. That's got it. That's what I'm after. Something like that, but more of a watered down version. So something like that there. Okay. And that is going to be the colour we'll add underneath the nose. So we'll just pop that in. So I'm going to go for a size one brush, just for a change. Just to confuse you, really. That's what I'm doing it for. So if you're completely confused, Join the club. I know the feeling. Right. So we're going to paint this in. But first thing I'd like to do is just wet the nose. And these are wet nose, aren't they? A little wet nose. Just be careful when you get paint on your paper that you put your hand on. Otherwise you might end up moving it across. Especially if it's still wet. So wet the nose first of all. Let it soak into the paper. Let it go, let it go into the paper. And then we'll tap in this color just made. This is just going to be an underlining kind of foundation level color. That's all it simply is. So it's a foundation level color, which I want to add in for this nose to begin with. Let it blend upwards. Not like that, just like that. Blend it upwards. <laughs> oh dear. I know. That's so comical having a little pink nose like that. But we need that underneath. So what we'll be doing with that later on, we'll be adding watercolor white over the top. But also around the edges of this, we'll be adding another layer over the top or around this anyway, of like a grey brown colour, which is going to be the underlying colour ready for adding the details over the top later on. Okay. So that's the idea behind all that. But I'll say later on that maybe next week because obviously time is ticking, uh, ticking on here, isn't it? How long have we been on for, by the way, everybody? Got any ideas? 42 minutes nearly now. We've been live. So already, I know, where's the time fly? It really does. Just go as by so quick. So now for the nut. So again, I'm putting a foundation wash on that one. So dampen it down first of all. Just be careful to keep right inside those little areas. And the best way of remembering with watercolour as well is that the you know the paint will only go, you know, where it's gonna go on the on the wet paper. So it can only go where it's wet. So you don't have to worry too much. So again, I'm gonna go for a little bit of that. I do like raw sienna today for some reason. I don't know why. But it just seems to be the right colour for everything I'm doing at the moment. So everything seems to match together, doesn't it? So raw sienna, but I'm also going to go for a little bit of raw rumba mixed in with that. Then we can rock this in. First of all, a little bit more water in that. I think a bit too thick. <coughs> Excuse me. Just a little bit more. And just fill that in. That's it. And then 
As it starts to dry, you can tap in some more pigment. And all the way up the side. Right, so we just need that to dry now. You can either give it a blast with a hairdryer or you can just wait naturally for it to dry. And it's quite warm here today. So what we got there, have a quick look. Oh, thank you, Laura, Laura Lala. I'll, I'll have a look at the, your channel later on, Laura. Thank you very much indeed. A bit tricky while I'm live. Um, Una, hello, how are you? Hi all, I'm a little confused. Is this live? Yes, it is live, Una. Thank you very much for joining me today. So, yep, yeah, you got me live. It's my second attempt today because the first attempt failed miserably due to my, um, my mobile phone not working correctly. So this is live, so well, well done and you're welcome to sit and relax and join in the conversation here. I'm gonna get some more Elysian Crimson. Try and make sure you've still got this on camera, which you won't have at the moment because obviously I've gone to the obviously zoomed out screen. Um, I'll tell you what I might do actually, if you don't mind just hanging on a minute. I'll just push that over there just a bit more. Where's he gone? Wait, come back here you. There you go. They can have a little bit of colour in there as well. Is that better for you? Yeah, of course it is. So, hello Una, how are you today? And thank you for coming along to my membership as well. It's very kind of you to join. Um, now, I'm thinking about, yeah, the little claws that's in here. So we've got some there. So it's a little bit too thick there. So just dampen it down, lift some paint off. That's better. Look at where these go, and there's no one just there. There's just to kind of, as I say, add, add this first layer of wash on. So it's got nail varnish on, or nail polish on, doesn't it? But we need this on there, because it'll help us later on when we get around to painting these, these little claws. And that goes underneath. Try not to touch anything that's already wet, so that's gonna bleed into there otherwise. Okay, now I think we're getting close to thinking about the main wash colour for the squiggle. It's a red squiggle, I know. So the main wash colour, we're going to be looking at, as I mentioned earlier on, these colours here initially. We want these to be quite watery as well, we don't want them too thick. So we're looking at burnt umber, burnt sienna and raw umber as those kind of mixes. But what we're looking for straight off is something like this colour here and we can drop in additional colours into the wet paint as we go along. So we need to make sure we've got these mixed up ready, don't we? So we'll do that now and get them mixed up while I'm talking to you. Um, anybody else? No, that's fine. Yeah, I know. Is this live, Paul? Yeah, we're live. We're live. Okay. So if I just move that around there so you can just see what I'm doing. And you find that when you mix these colours, you've got to make sure that they're mixed to a mm, more of a kind of watery consistency to begin with. We don't want to go too dark too quick, as I said earlier on. So we're going to go for, first of all, we've got the burnt sienna, which we've already got on the other side of the palette out of shot. So I'll put some in there for your sake as well, so you can see it, okay? And we need this very watery. And when I say watery, you want more water than pigment, so something like that there. And then we've got a little bit of burnt umber, gonna go in. So it's burnt umber. A little bit more, I think. It's not quite strong enough. Ah, that's better. So a tiny amount of burnt umber. Okay. And then we've got um, raw umber, which is also a nice colour. I do use that quite a lot as well, raw umber, especially for the wildlife paintings. So it's very useful for that. Now, if you're watching this today or any other day, actually, just do me one favour. If you haven't subscribed already to my channel, please do so. If you click on the subscribe button down below, please, 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 thank you very much. Um, and then click on the bell icon after doing that. That means then once you subscribe and clicked on that bell icon next to it, you will then be notified when I go live again, or when I post another video here on YouTube. At least that way you're not gonna miss one, are you? So you'll be able to kind of catch up with me as well. 
Um, so it's well worth just bearing that in mind, okay? So click on subscribe and then the bell icon as a little thank you. And also, if you want to watch more like this, go in live, <laughs> as long as they go according to plan. Now, I'm going to go for size 5 brush, which is this one here. And this one, just out of interest, is a size 5. It's by Rosemary & Co. It's a pure sable and it's a series 93. Now these are, I think this is a, a family business, which I, I do use some of their brushes. I mean, I've got the size one here as well. And I've got some other ones in my uh, kind of storage at the moment, which are lovely brushes they really are. Um, so well worth probably investing in those. I don't get paid by them, so don't worry. Um, but it is a nice brush. Okay, so before I go for this, I'll make sure there's no more comments because I'm gonna be on the painting a bit more now. And uh, we'll go from there. Right, okay. You ready? Let's do it. Now, what can you see? Can you see the ears? Yes, you can. I'm going to go wider on the camera just for now. For the simple fact is with this one, I need you to be able to see what I'm doing. Um, just move that over there a little bit more. Okay. I want to get my hand in there as well, being a lefty. Now, I'm going to start off by wetting the ears first of all, just zoom this out, I'm trying to decide if I'm going to wet all of it, I might wet all of it actually, let's just go for it. So I'm going to go for the tail, the bushy tail and the ears, we'll do that area first of all, okay. We will need to wet this probably two, maybe three times and again this is just at foundation level, that's all it is. So nothing, we're not going too dark or anything like that just yet, just something just to work on top of. So now one of the things that a lot of my students tend to find, not everybody, but a lot of them do, is when you're staring at a white blank piece of paper before you start a painting. So getting some colour down straight away, as soon as you can, as soon as you can, once you've worked out what colours you want. Remember to do a lot of testing, like I do beforehand though, Sometimes I spend half an hour or so doing some testing out. Do that first and then just get some colour on that paper. Okay, so just get it straight on there as soon as you can. And that way, once you start painting and you get into the rhythm of painting, time just flies. Just flies by, really does. So wet this, as I say, probably a couple of times or so, two or even three times. all the way down and the reason why I'm not doing it all in one go is simply because I know it's going to start drying and I'm going to be fighting drying times and one thing I don't want to do is having to fight the paper drying because it will I'm going to wet this further than I need to go on purpose and especially around the top there I want this to kind of sort of blur out towards the background so the idea will be is that when we add the colour on We'll stop the paint about here, but allow it to blend into the water further on. Okay, down to the back. Then we can paint, obviously, the, uh, the squiggle, 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 it's a squiggle, we'll call it a squiggle. Uh, after this has dried then. Because if you paint it while it's still wet and it bleeds into this damp paper, and you finally end up with what's called cauliflower marks or blooms, I think people call them as well. And that's where, it's quite a nice effect actually, I quite, <laughs> quite like it for background. Um, it's where the, the paper just, or the paint just kind of bursts out like a little starburst. So they are nice, but mm, in the right place and the right time, I think. So I've got a comment on there on YouTube. I don't, I can't understand it. I'm sorry, but I don't understand the language. Um, so I do apologize. What I would normally do is use Google Translate. So I go open a new tab and I use Google Translate to just to translate comments, which I'll do later on for you. And then I'll reply to you later on. And so remember that if you're watching this on catch up, then you can still put a comment I will still reply to you at some point, as soon as you two let me know, which they will very often. Okay, 
that's wet enough I think for now. I'm going to go first of all with a raw umber. Now this is quite a dull colour. In a sense it's duller compared to what we're going to put on there anyway. I'm going to pop this onto the paper first of all. And I want to finish the waters up to there. But I'm going to stop here. And that's because I want it to blend out to the white of the paper. And we'll add this onto the ears. Because we have wetted the ears. And try and apply the colour in the direction that you know that it all goes. You can see the lines going in. Now I tend to akin this to something like a clock face. Let's just do it on the other side a minute. So for example, that's going towards sort of two o'clock or so eight o'clock. <laughs> and that's how I tend to work, going up towards one o'clock, going up to twelve o'clock, and so on. And by telling yourself that as you're working around a painting, this helps kind of keep you on track as your eyes are flicking backward and forward to that reference photo. Okay. A little bit more. Just to there. As I say, this is just that first foundation layer. That's all it is. It's nothing too detailed or anything like that just yet. It's just that underlying color which you'll need to go underneath the fur, without which it could look a little bit, a little bit flat when we do paint the fur later on. Well, the next stage, I think that'll be. And then I'm going to go for the burnt sienna. Look at that; that's all in it. And do the same thing in the right direction as you work around that clock face. Think of the center of the forehead as the center of the clock in this case. Just to add this color in. Just one's nice and damp as well. It's not soaking wet, it's not running down the paper like a waterfall, it's just nice and damp. And then working my way around. Working my way back to you, babe. Oh no, that's a different song, isn't it? Okay, sorry. And then down to the bottom. I've been like that all day, I don't know why I'm like that today. I really don't. Because I'm a happy person. I am most of the time. Okay, and we need that to dry before we can add the layer over the head and obviously the, the, the pores and so on. So I can't do anything else on that until it's nice and dry. I might just add a few little details down here. Well, not details, suggestions just down that area there. Wash your brush out, come back in, and then just soften that down. Just we've got a bit of colour in there. And then obviously when we add the detail over that later on, I may even have another wash of colour yet. But you can see, for example, around here, it's a little bit kind of stronger in tone around that area there. And just pull out, as I say, in the direction that the hairs go. And the same on this side. Tap it in first of all. What time is it today? They are 25 past or nearly 25 past four in the afternoon here in North Devon. So hello from the around the world. If you're indoors, obviously because you can't go out, I know the feeling sometimes. Well, Joe and I are not housebound just yet. We can go out for our regular walks, so we do that. Just trying to get the home shopping slots is very difficult, isn't it? With the um, supermarkets. So we're okay though, we're fine. So I hope you are. So stay safe, everybody. Please do, okay? And I mean that. And as I said earlier on, thank you to the NHS here in the UK for all their hard work. And also, all of the countries, all the medics over there, they're working their, working their socks off trying to make everything work for everybody. So thank you very much indeed for all your hard work. Okay. Right. Now, that needs to dry. Or we can give it a blast with a hairdryer, one or the other. But looking at the time, I think it's about time we made a move. I'm going to go, on, go downstairs and put the kettle on in a minute. So... If you've got any questions you want to fire me, now is your chance. And as I said, if I'm not online when you do, don't worry. We'll, uh, I'll check them later on anyway tonight and we'll have a look at that. Okay. So I hope that's given you some general ideas on how I start on a portrait, working on an animal reference, something like this one here. And hopefully next week, if we can go live again next week, I'll do my best to do so. Roughly the same kind of time uh, next week. And there's a, well, it should have been three o'clock in the afternoon but I think it was a little bit late wasn't I because we had a bit of a failure on the first live event um, so a bit the same kind of time next week hopefully okay and I want to keep you all busy and all painting so as I said earlier on 
Remember one last thing, click on that subscribe button down there and the bell icon just to make sure that you, you get notified when I do go live again, because otherwise you'll miss the live event, okay? And at least that way around, you're not going to miss out. And also, if you fancy having a go at two free video lessons on my website, Devon Artist, that one up there a lot, .co.uk, pop on there, join up as a free member. You don't have to pay, it's all free. Uh, so join up as a free member, and I've got two videos on there for you to have a go at, which includes a reference drawing and the uh, obviously the photograph as well and uh, even a couple of little tips and tricks videos for you. So give us some ideas on what we do on there, okay? Right, until next time around, I'm gonna say goodbye. But one last thing, remember one last thing, look after yourself and stay well and uh, keep them bushes wet, okay? So, bye for now, see ya.